Okay, I was willing to uh, let one black Humvee following me go, but I stop at the post office and I'm picked up again by the same one. Sorry, but that's just too much of a coincidence. I can't uh, really work the camera real well and drive at the same time, so I'll just try to keep it on him. Let's take him to the power company, see if he'll pay my electric bill for me. That's a good shot of you, buddy. Still think I'm kidding? You don't talk about it. Parties. You want me on that wall. You need me on that wall. Keep this frequency clear. And now it's conspiracy. See, they've made that something that that is that is, should, should not be even entertained for a minute. That powerful people might get together and have a plan. Doesn't happen. You're a kook. You're a conspiracy buff. You're watching The Truth Is Viral, the only news program on the internet trusted to deliver the truth since 2008. And now. Here's your host, Mr. Bobby Powell. Welcome back to The Truth is Viral. I'm your host, Bob Powell. Yeah, I, uh, I get followed <laughs> every now and then. It's rather disconcerting, but, you know, what am I going to do? I'm obviously on their radar, and a big reason for that is uh, this episode that I publish right here. It's arguably the best investigative work that I've ever done. And... Uh, it's also one of the least viewed of my episodes and the reason for that is that when I released it I only had 300 subscribers here on YouTube and uh, now that number has uh, exploded to near 15,000 that's a that's a heavy armored division folks and uh, I depend on you to get this information out there because I have exclusive information in this uh, episode of The Truth is Viral, coming from a NATO spokesman who told me on the record that the reason that Barack Obama gave for invading Libya, that Muammar Gaddafi was about to gas these innocent protesters, was an absolute lie. And NATO knew it. And they went along with it. So, uh, yeah, this is a very explosive episode of The Truth is Viral. And I want to uh, take a a second here and ask you to share it. Share it everywhere that you can because the facts that I reported just days after Muammar Gaddafi's death are just now coming out in the mainstream media. There are facts in this episode that you that will blow your mind. You wouldn't believe how incredibly powerful you people are. By sharing this information you are saving lives. The dirt that has gone on in the name of the American people is astonishing. The murders, the innocent lives taken by drone strikes and cluster bombs. My God. Now, I'm a blood and guts Marine, but that violence should be focused. It should be focused at an enemy. What happened in Libya was wrong. And you need to wake your friends and neighbors up to what's going on in their name. Because their tax dollars are now 
being given to the very same Al Qaeda terrorists, Abdel Hakim Al Asidi and Abdel Hakim Belhaj, that uh, overthrew Muammar Gaddafi. They're in Syria now, fighting with the Free Syrian Army. They're just it's just a viper's nest of Al Qaeda terrorists, and your tax dollars are going to support that. We have to stop that, and the only way to do that is for you to share this show. My name is Bob Powell, and this week I'm going to take you on a very strange journey. It starts in Doha, Qatar, and ends in Tripoli, Libya. And let me tell you something, folks. Along the entire way, we've been lied to by every media outlet in the world, practically. If it's a mainstream media outlet, you can pretty much guarantee that they're lying on this one. Because, you know, it seems like they live in opposite land, or maybe we do. Or maybe we're all living in George Orwell's novel 1984, where war is peace, and freedom is slavery, and ignorance is strength. So yeah, we've been sold a bill of goods. I've never been a big fan of Muammar Gaddafi, but what happened here was wrong. There was no popular revolution in Libya. By and large, the people of Libya had absolutely nothing to complain about. They had the highest standard of living in Africa, and with benefits including... $500 a year that comes from oil revenue deposited directly into their bank accounts, a $50,000 gift to newlyweds, a free and compulsory education, equal rights for women and minorities, interest-free loans, free housing. I find it interesting to note here that Gaddafi swore that every Libyan would be housed before his own parents were. His father died before Gaddafi kept that promise. But he was finally able to move his mother into a new home because he had finally housed every other Libyan in the country. And those homes had free electricity. The people that lived in those homes benefited from free universal health care. If they wanted to be a farmer, well, you got a free farm and the seed to go along with it to start you off. And gasoline was 14 cents a gallon. And the government would pay for half the cost of your car. Under Muammar Gaddafi, the literacy rate rose from 10% to 90% during his term in office. In just one generation, he brought knowledge and literacy to an entire country. I don't care who you are, you've got to admire that. And then there's the universal health care. If there was something that wasn't available in Libya and a Libyan citizen needed to have a certain type of health care that wasn't available there, well, the government would ship you off to another country where that treatment was available and that they, they'd pay for it. There is no denying at least one very popular achievement of the Libyan government. The $33 billion GMMR, the Great Man-Made River Project, which brought water to the desert by building the largest and most expensive irrigation project in history. The GMMR provides 70% of the population with water for drinking and irrigation and it literally made the desert bloom. Now, I don't know what he was doing, but obviously the man was doing something right especially when you consider the fact that he was able to do all of this for his people on his own dime. That's right, Libya carried no foreign debt. He used his country's oil wealth to pay for everything and never paid a foreign bank a single penny in interest. The banksters didn't like that. We'll get to that later too. We were told before the Iraq war that Saddam Hussein had weapons of mass destruction. We were told that we had to intervene or one day he was going to nuke one of our cities. Do you remember that? I remember. We cannot wait for the final proof. The smoking gun that could come in the form of a mushroom cloud. Well, there were no weapons of mass destruction, were there? Those weapons of mass destruction got to be somewhere. <laughs> yeah, that President Bush, he just cracks me up. He's a real jolly joker. A real funny guy. I'll touch on that later, too. So why did we go to war with Iraq? Bush knew that he was lying about the WMD, so he must have had another reason. I'm putting my money on two reasons. One of them was very personal. After all, this is the guy that tried to kill my dad at one time. Yeah, he not only wanted to kill the man that tried to kill his father, he wanted to protect the oil wealth that the Bush family had been building up for many, many years, too. Yeah, let's not forget about that. 
Now, back in 2000, Saddam Hussein had announced that he wanted to start selling his oil in euros instead of dollars, which is the standard currency for OPEC nations that, that sell their oil. Well, that's where the banksters come in. They just couldn't let that happen because every dollar that's printed comes from the Federal Reserve. Arab nations accept those dollars in payment for their oil, but where do you think that the money is redeposited? Where do the Arabs bank? That's right. They bank at the Federal Reserve Bank in New York. The United States intervened secretly in 1973 when OPEC was evaluating this proposal to say, please don't do that. And they were talking to Saudi Arabia, the crown prince of Saudi Arabia, and say, why don't you sell these in dollars only? And they're working closely with the British on this. And we will, it's sort of a, a quid pro quo, we will protect you, we will sell you military arms, we'll keep you in power as long as you keep selling oil in dollars. Even the CIA didn't know about it at first, neither did Congress. But after the fact, it was, our, it was a fait accompli, it was done. So ever since then, for the last 31 years, the dollars that OPEC gets flows back to the Federal Reserve Bank of New York. After the petrodollar recycling system was implemented, 70% of Saudi Arabia's entire wealth was in one account in the Federal Reserve of New York. And that implemented a system where we kept the Saudis in power, they got rich, and we had an unlimited credit card. I've got to say, that's a pretty slick scam that they've got going there. You know, Libya has been on the hit list of the powers that be for a long time. Let's listen to General Wesley Clark. He said, um, he pulled up a piece of paper off his desk. He said, I just got this memo from the Secretary of Defense's office that says we're going to attack and destroy the governments in, in seven countries in five years. We're going to start with Iraq, and then we're going to move to Syria, Lebanon, Libya, Somalia, Sudan, and Iran. I said, seven, seven countries in five years. I said, is that a classified memo? He said, yes, sir. I said, well, don't show it to me. He was about to show it to me. He said, because I want to talk about it. Making the same mistake that Saddam made a decade ago, Gaddafi gave the banksters the excuse they were looking for. He told them to take their dollars and shove them where the sun doesn't shine. He announced that he would no longer accept dollars or even euros as payment for his country's oil. He wanted real gold. He wanted dinars in exchange for the black gold that he had. And with that, Gaddafi sealed his own fate. <laughs> On February 23rd, special forces from three NATO nations arrived in Libya, France, Britain, and the United States. They began to arm and train these rebels that were based in Benghazi. Advanced forces from the Gulf Cooperation Council, consisting mainly of Qatari soldiers, set up shop in the Nafusa Mountains, Benghazi, and eventually Tripoli to train the rebels. But just who are these rebels? Well, they come from eastern Libya. That's where the revolution began and it's been a hotbed for al-Qaeda terrorists for years. Many of the terrorists from that region went abroad to wage jihad against the United States in Iraq and Afghanistan, only to come home to Libya to be jailed by Gaddafi for belonging to the LIGF, the Libyan Islamic Fighting Group, a terrorist group that Gaddafi had put down years earlier. At least he thought he had put them down. I guess he was mistaken. That's right. You heard me correctly. Muammar Gaddafi, the man that we've been told was a terrorist, all of these years was also an active partner in the war on terror. His jails were filled with al-Qaeda terrorists, including these two men, Abdul Hakim Belhaj and Abdel Hakim al-Asidi. Al-Asidi was captured near Peshawar, Pakistan, where he was fighting coalition forces. After his capture, he was turned over to the U.S. where he spent time as a guest of the CIA before being turned over to the Libyans to rot in their jails for a while. Now, Belhaj is a little bit different. He's an old-school jihadist, a real OG. He fought alongside Osama bin Laden along with scores of other fighters from the LIFG during the Soviet invasion of Afghanistan. And that's how far back his al-Qaeda ties go. He was also captured and held for a time in a secret prison a special CIA prison in Malaysia before he was sent to Libya to languish there as well. Bill Hodge and Hal Asidi were freed earlier this year along with 240 other Islamic militants at the exact same time that foreign intelligence operatives were landing in eastern Libya 
by Muammar Gaddafi's son Saif in an attempt at reconciliation. Among them are leaders of the Al-Qaeda-linked Libyan Islamic Fighting Group. In total, 214 prisoners linked to militant groups were set free, in a key milestone for Libya's program of reconciliation with militants who killed dozens of soldiers and police in the 1990s. So now that the commanders have been placed in the field, all they need are troops. We're better than to find a bunch of scumbag terrorists than a prison. Well, remember this from Wednesday? Anti-Gaddafi rebels freed a prison in Tripoli. Today, CNN has learned that among those liberated, inmates are hundreds of men who are believed to be supporters of Al-Qaeda. They're now on the loose. By now, the revolution was picking up steam, with a literal army of Al-Qaeda terrorists and supporters on the ground. However, the Libyan leader was successfully dealing with the uprising and was pushing the rebels back until March 19th, when NATO, in response to mainstream media allegations of atrocities being committed by the Gaddafi regime, began raining cruise missiles and laser-guided bombs down on the country. In the video we're watching now, a NATO cluster bomb munition hits an area densely populated by civilians. Cluster bombs near civilians? Really? What in the hell were you guys thinking? Whatever happened to precision munitions? Well, we'll get back to the tactics in this war in just a minute. Right now, I'd like to point out an oddity. What do you suppose would be a major priority for an insurgent force that's trying to overthrow a government? Securing weapons, maybe. Planning strategy. Pushing the fight forward? That's what I'd do. What would you say if I told you that one of the first things that these rebels did before NATO started helping them was to open up a central bank? That's right. The very same day that NATO got involved, and long before any victory was assured, the CIA and MI6 trained Al-Qaeda rebels opened up a central bank and a new national oil company. The supposed ragtag revolutionaries announced the formation of the Libyan Oil Company as supervisory authority on oil production and policies in the country based temporarily in Benghazi and the appointment of an interim director general of the company. The council also said it designated the Central Bank of Benghazi as a monetary authority competent in monetary policies in Libya and the appointment of a governor to the Central Bank of Libya with a temporary headquarters in Benghazi. Writing for the website economicpolicyjournal.com, economist Robert Wenzel stated, Here's one for the Guinness Book of World Records. This suggests that we're having a bit more than a ragtag bunch of rebels running around and that they have some pretty sophisticated influences. I have never before heard of a central bank being created in just a matter of weeks out of a popular uprising. This continues to look like a major oil and money play with the true disaffected rebels being used as puppets and cover as the oil money and transfers take place. Now by late June, the rebels were pushing down from the Nafusa Mountains to towns in the foothills which was allowing them to gain control of the strategically important roadways that linked Tripoli with Tunisia, which was Gaddafi's main source of supplies. It's important to note here that those bases in the Nafusa Mountains were the staging area for the Qatari troops who were part of the GCC contingent based out of Doha along with troops from the United Arab Emirates. They had been training there alongside Al-Qaeda terrorists for months with Qatari weapons brought in on fishing boats. Uh, we believe France still supplies weapons to the rebels and today the Libyan rebels whom we captured in these two boats admitted that the whole operation uh, was carried out with the coordination between them, the Qatari army and NATO ships in the Mediterranean Sea. After several more months of NATO bombardment, Gaddafi's forces were surrounded by rebel forces and getting pounded from the air every time they tried to make a move. Finally, on October 20th, an 80-vehicle convoy carrying Muammar Gaddafi attempted to escape the city of Sirte, where he'd been holed up. They broke through the inner cordon of Al-Qaeda and Qatari troops, 
but before they could get away, the convoy was attacked by French fighter planes and a Predator drone that was being flown from Las Vegas, Nevada. What we can certainly say to you is we, we didn't target the convoy believing Gaddafi was in it. There was a convoy of vehicles, maneuver, military vehicles, maneuvering in the vicinity of CERT, heading in a particular direction, with, armed to the teeth, which was engaged by NATO aircraft yesterday. Okay, yesterday, 0830 local time. Uh, convoy, one, there, was a, there was a strike, convoy was disrupted, um, a number of the vehicles heading off in a different direction, that was then struck again, it was disrupted. We then, obviously at some, some delay, see the events that unfolded on the TV screens. The whole world watched as the videos poured onto the internet. We watched as Muammar Gaddafi was dragged out of a drainage culvert. We watched as he was beaten, we watched as he was abused and even sodomized by his captors. He was paraded around on the hood of a truck like a 10-point buck on the last day of hunting season. He was dragged through the streets and beaten some more, and then he was murdered. I was watching one of the videos of Gaddafi's capture, where I saw a user had made mention of the fact that the rebels that surrounded Gaddafi, the ones that were ripping a now defenseless 70-year-old man to shreds, we're wearing the uniforms of the Qatari army, whose camouflage pattern is distinct from the patterns of the other countries in the Middle East. I wondered what the hell Qatari troops were doing there in the first place. I thought this was a NATO operation. So what were GCC troops doing involved? I was curious to see if uh, those really were Qatari troops, so I forwarded the video to a couple of people I know that live in the Middle East. They confirmed that the men were in fact wearing Qatari uniforms. That can be explained, I suppose, by the 18 plane loads worth of supplies that the Qataris had flown into the rebels. But the fact that they were speaking Arabic with a Qatari accent is a bit harder to reconcile with the fact that they were really rebels. So now I'll tie it all together. The U.S. Central Command is located in Doha, Qatar. That alone should speak volumes. After he was released from prison by Saif Qaddafi, Guess who turned up at the Doha Libyan Contact Group as one of the participants who was to help chart Libya's future? If you guessed old school AQ terrorist Abdul Belhaj, close associate of Iraqi Al Qaeda leader Abu Musab al Zakawi, and a former guest of the CIA, then you have guessed correctly. Ding, ding, ding. He and his buddy Abdel Hakim al Hasidi are now ranking members of the new Libyan National Transitional Council. That's right, the CIA is responsible for putting the worst possible scum in the world in charge of Libya. I can say that they are the worst possible scum with conviction, because I've seen the aftermath of their campaign of terror as they ravaged the Libyan landscape, and now you will too. If you have a weak stomach, then turn off the video. If you have children in the room, tell them to leave, because what's coming up next is disturbing. As they went terror-assing around Libya, these rebels have waged a brutal, racist campaign of genocide against black Libyans and black guest workers from other African countries. Not even light-skinned Libyans who have sheltered their black friends and neighbors are free from reprisals. The signature Al-Qaeda beheading is usually the price they pay for being black. Don't forget to go to the blog at bobpowell.blogspot.com and subscribe there too and on google plus add me to uh to your circle so that when uh, i have an update you'll be first to know what's new if the truth is viral uh, and while you're there at the blog if you have the financial ability please donate to the cause because everything that i do is paid for by you i can't afford to do any of this stuff on my disability alone it's 600 bucks a month and it's barely enough to live on so if i do anything with the show it's with your help and your support. Don't forget to keep us in your prayers. We've got a lot of uh, a lot of issues, but uh, <laughs> we're working through them as best we can. Staying strong and with faith in the Lord. Thank you so much for your prayers, and you know that that really means the most to us. Keeping us uh, covered in prayer. And that, that's just awesome. I can't believe the love and support that we get from you guys. So, you know, all the evil stuff that I see, I see a lot of goodness too. 
Not even children are immune to the atrocities being committed by these Al-Qaeda rebels. Well, I guess they're not rebels anymore. They're in charge of the government now. In a scene harking back to the Crusades, this young boy was impaled on a metal pole by the advancing Al-Qaeda terrorists. Let's just call them that. What his crime was, we'll never know. What the hell kind of people are these? Do we really want these people in charge of Libya? Look at what we've done. My God, I have never been so ashamed of my government as I am today. Muammar Gaddafi was no saint, but in his 41 years as the ruler of Libya, he never came close to the level of brutality that has been displayed since this fake revolution was started by the banksters and the CIA. Compared to what we've just witnessed, Gaddafi was right up there along with Mother Teresa and Gandhi. And with an Islamist government waiting in the wings, the future for ordinary Libyans is looking pretty doggone dim. You know, it's true that he was a thorn in the side of the West for years. But in recent years, Gaddafi had given up terrorism and he had halted his WMD programs altogether. Anymore, he was not much more than a minor annoyance. Part of the issue with Gaddafi was he was very demonstrably drawing down his old WND capability. Now that the raw materials were there, um, and those needed to be secured, but there was, I remember, um, and in fact I talked to a journalist who was there for a long time through the summer, and he was saying um, there was nothing weaponized because they'd very deliberately stopped that program and were, were kind of in the process of disposing of it all. So we've got to be a bit careful. Yeah, Muammar Gaddafi was no saint, but neither was he the monster that the mainstream media has been portraying him as since last February. So who's going to protect the members of Gaddafi's tribe, the people that supported him, or the hundreds of thousands of black Libyans from the genocide that's being waged now by the new ruling class? I guess it doesn't matter now, because the banksters have their bank. So before I go throw up, I'm going to share one more clip with you. This video is of Secretary of State Hillary Clinton, and it was taken candidly. She didn't know that the camera was rolling. This is what she said at the moment it was confirmed that Muammar Gaddafi had been killed. Confirmed. Yes, we came, we saw, he died. <laughs> Did it have anything? She thinks this is funny. <laughs> No real feeling human being would make jokes about a defenseless old man, regardless of what he'd done in the past, that's been shot in both legs so that he can't escape, then brutalized, sodomized, and beaten nearly to death until somebody mercifully often one in the chest, one in the head. And Hillary's not the only cold-blooded reptilian slinking around the offices of the White House these days. After he killed Alawaki and his 16-year-old son a few weeks ago, President Obama decided he's got jokes too. But uh, boys don't get any ideas. I have two words for you. Predator drones. <laughs> you will never see it coming. Remember the Bush clip from before? Well, he can get in on this too. Those weapons of mass destruction got to be somewhere. <laughs> oh, no weapons over there. Maybe under here. <laughs> Oops, this photo wasn't supposed to be in here. This is a skull and bone secret signal. <laughs> I like this next picture a lot. It's hard to get Rumsfeld to laugh, but when he does, boy, it is worth it. What kind of psychopaths do we have running our government? Are they mentally damaged in some way that they can joke about the suffering of anybody, much less when they start a war for no reason that takes the lives of hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people? They laugh, they make jokes. You need to do something about this, people. A 
told you you wouldn't believe it. You'll never see any of that in the mainstream media, but it's all absolutely 100% true. And I got the words right out of the, the horse's mouth, too, right from a, a NATO spokesman. So uh, there's no denying it. There was no legitimate reason for the United States or NATO to go to war in Libya. That whole thing was nothing but a lie. Now, we need to share this information, folks. I don't mind walking point, but I need you to have my six and my flanks. I need you to share this on Twitter, put it on Facebook, put it on Reddit. Uh, speaking about Facebook, when you put it on there, don't just put it on your own timeline. Uh, put it in each of the groups that you belong to. You, you wouldn't believe how incredibly powerful you people are. How incredibly powerful a tool the internet is. We can get this information out there and maybe we can stop these murders that are being committed in our name. The very same Al-Qaeda terrorists that uh, overthrew Muammar Gaddafi, uh, Belhaj and al-Assidi are in Syria right now fighting with the Free Syrian Army with uh, funds and training courtesy of Barack Hussein Obama. They're wiping out entire Christian villages. You don't see this on the mainstream media because they're all complicit in it. I mean, sure, they'll touch on it, but they don't go into the horrors of what is really happening in Syria right this very minute. Christians are being beheaded for their faith. They're being crucified. Men, women, children being torn apart. Their heads being used as soccer balls. I can't show you most of the stuff that I've seen on YouTube. But if you really want, there are shock sites out there, places that haunt, <laughs> haunt my dreams, where you can see exactly what's going on. All you got to do is Google it and, and have the guts to, to, to watch. Uh, but I wouldn't recommend it. It'll put a black mark on you. It's a heavy burden to know how cruel men can be to one another. And this insane cruelty is being paid for with your tax dollars. Why don't you do something about it? At the very least, share this show in every way that you can. Don't forget to subscribe to The Truth Is Viral on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter at The Truth Is Viral. Uh, go to The Truth Is Viral forum at ttiv.forummotion.com. My brother, my Marine brother Jimmy, is doing an awesome job keeping that place up to date. I'll put it up on against any forum on the internet. Subscribe to the blog at bobpowell.blogspot.com, and then if you are financially able, you know, donate to this mission because, you know, they're uh, taxing me pretty heavily. My, my uh, uh, disability benefits are just about gone. I, the more I report, the less I get. Well, and, and as, as it should be. I'm just starting to be able to make a living with this. Be able to pay my bills. And that's all I care about. It really is. Just be able to put some food on the table and, and keep the lights on. We've never had a fancy lifestyle. And I don't see any reason to change that now. So, you know, all the money that, that uh, is donated to the show does go uh, to end to the show. Like that technology that I bought that allows me to broadcast live from anywhere. That's going to come into... Uh, it's going to come in very handy this spring. Uh, Major General Paul Valley is calling for a march on Washington, D.C. Yeah, I know it's been tried before, but we've got to keep on trying. We've got to keep on trying. Can't just lay down and die. Thank you for watching The Truth is Viral. My name is Bob Powell. And as always, God bless. Semper Fi. And hoorah, I'm going to go ahead and pay some more bills. Thank you for watching The Truth is Viral with your host, Bobby Powell. Make sure to follow The Apocalypse on Twitter at The Truth is Viral. Like The Truth is Viral on Facebook. And if you can, please remember to donate to the cause via PayPal at www bobpowell.blogspot.com Smack Runner Your game is through Smack Runner I'm talking
to you. 